Welcome to another exciting episode of A Soldier's Life. Again, my name is Sergeant First Class Michael Warwick, and I am a recruiter out of the Horse Edge Recruiting Station in Horse Edge, New York. Uh, this is a very important episode. Well, this episode we're going to break down is the recruitment process. So basically from the very first time uh, you meet a recruiter uh, to the very last day before you uh, ship out to your basic training. Um, so before we get into all that, uh, a couple of uh, people in the area were writing into the uh, to WTM in regards to asking some questions, making uh, some you know really good positive comments about the show. And we just want to clarify that this show's purpose is to provide uh, information and knowledge about the Army and a soldier's life. And, and this episode is probably one of the most important ones just because this will break down the whole recruitment process from, like I said, first time you meet a recruiter um, to job selection to physical, so on and so forth, um, all the way up to the end when you ship out. Now, when you meet a recruiter, it could be from anywhere, whether we're out and about in the community or through we're at a local high school putting on what we call a table display or a career fair, a college fair. As a matter of fact, tonight I have to go to a college fair. Uh, also, we do make uh, random calls around uh, to uh, local households to see if anybody would be interested in that way. Or, you know, we have people walking into our office, which again is located at the Arnhem Mall in Horsehead, New York. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really just get that information out there. So when you first meet a recruiter, um, please don't feel uh, intimidated or nervous, right? We put our pants on just like you do, uh, one leg at a time. Uh, I know when I first came in, um, I really wasn't so nervous. I was very, I guess for lack of a better term, anxious to see what could be out there for myself. And really that first initial um, meeting, uh, is, is that's really what it is, gets a little bit of information out there. And then what we'll do is set up a follow-on appointment, um, just like a normal job interview at, at, at a local company, whether corny, stuff like that, you have a job interview. Now, uh, and you know, not uh, Facebook, we do a lot of uh, posts on Facebook to where um, we try to communicate with our, our people out there, our, our public out there in regards to um, trying to make that contact uh, to see if someone's interested. Um, so those are uh, some of the situations you could come across where you would actually meet a Army recruiter. Now, like I said a couple minutes ago in regards to making an appointment with an Army recruiter, so we'll base it off our schedule that's usually uh, planned out a week or two uh, ahead of time of what we have going on, community relations, other events going on, and also to accommodate your schedule as well. And you'll come down. Uh, we, we try to tell our applicants or our people coming down to get some information about an hour to an hour and a half, maybe, give or take, um, at the appointment. Now, when you come down to the appointment, you don't have to, but we would like you to bring a uh, driver's license, uh, your Social Security card, and your birth certificate, uh, just because that's how we verify who you really are. You know, um, again, if you if you come down without it, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, we just you know like to know who our, our, our the person we're talking to is. Now, at the appointment, we'll sit down. Uh, the recruiter will typically tell you, you know, uh, how the Army has benefited them. You know, myself, the Army has, has, has completely changed my life. Uh, I wanted to be in some form of field of law enforcement growing up, which is very exciting to me, and it's a humanitarian aspect. I always want to get back to my community. Uh, so that's what I was pursuing, is some kind of a law enforcement. Now, that wasn't available to me, a uh, military police, uh, at that time. So. I actually jumped on uh, tanks, which is considered a 19 kilo armor crewman. Uh, fantastic job, loved it. Uh, first came to the Army for, for two years, and I had a lot, of, a lot of great times on tanks. Now, you know, at, at the appointment, uh, well, not only will the recruiter tell you about his experiences, where he's traveling, we also break down the, the benefits, the medical, optical, dental, stuff like that. They were fully covered, by the way. And um, also the college benefits, uh, tuition assistance, Montgomery GI Bill, Post 9-11 GI Bill, um, opportunities that where if you have a goal or you know that future endeavor endpoint that where you want to be at in, in your life, um, how the Army can help you uh, be that stepping stone or you know some people come through uh, and uh, want to be you know 20 year service member stuff like that. Uh, but there's there's all kinds of reasons why people join the United States Army, whether it's patriotism or get that college money, you know, get out of the area for a little while, get some experience, get some leadership, some discipline. Discipline was one of my big ones why I wanted. I, I needed discipline. I just I realized that uh, as a young man at that time that I knew in order for myself to be successful, I need some discipline. So at that appointment, that's what they're going to break down, answer any questions you may have. And we highly tell on the, on the phone call when we first uh, meet you somewhere, high school, we tell you, okay, we're gonna meet you on Thursday at two o'clock at the office, or we can come out to your place too, uh, whichever is convenient for you. Uh, write down some questions, because we love answering questions, and it's kind of a brainstorming thing. 
um, and it just helps you know you get your information that way you can make that uh, really best educated decision um, and at the appointment uh, we'll, we, we will give you a little uh, it's like a pretest so when everybody joins uh, the Army and we'll get into this a little bit later uh, they take the um, ASVAB it's the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery and it's a nine part test that test your skills on math and word comprehension, reading comprehension, vocabulary, some mechanical skill questions, stuff like that. And, uh, it, but the, the quiz that we give you, it's only four parts, and it'll give us a really good idea where you could be, uh, where you could be at, excuse me, in regards to that ASVAB score. So um, no matter what, if you, if you do really great or really you know, not so great, uh, we provide um, some, some uh, information, some website, uh, or excuse me, a website you can get on to brush up some of them skills so you get that high score that you may be trying to get down for the job that you would like to have. Um, so also with the appointment, uh, we will get uh, like your height and weight, uh, see where you're sitting at, because there's certain um, regulations we have to go by, right? There's minimum standards and there's maximum standards. You know, you come in the Army, you can't be, you know, a certain height, for example, you know, a four foot one weighing 35 pounds. It, it doesn't work like that. You can't be eight foot six weighing 600 pounds, right? So there are some standards there we have to uh, go by based on regulations, so on and so forth. Standards, again, uh, real big in the Army standards. Um, so that's how that works. And like I said, usually that's about an hour, hour and a half. We highly encourage that um, you, you bring down, you know, mom or dad, a boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever, someone there who, who we consider is uh, your support system, right? Someone who's going to, you know, uh, be there uh, to support you through your goal, okay, through, through this endeavor uh, uh, throughout the process. Stay tuned after this break. Our next segment, we're going to break down uh, the rest of the process of the re recruitment, breaking down some more of the ASVAB uh, uh, parts, the physical, becoming a future soldier, which I can't you know, stress enough is the most important piece in regards to you know, answering any questions you may have. Welcome back. Uh, just to touch base real quick on the um, appointment process. Um, some of the other things that we will um, evaluate is like your level of, uh, excuse me, level of education in regards to, you know, are you a GED holder, high school graduate, got some college, stuff like that, because that can open up some other areas uh, for you too, depending on what uh, your educational uh, level is. All right. um, now dealing with the, uh, going after we get done doing the, the, the test um, and we get you uh, test qualified, right, we'll schedule you to go up to Syracuse to take the actual ASVAB. Um, and once we get a good score on that, a passing score, um, we'll bring you back. We'll start building other parts of your, of your documentation to get you uh, qualified to take the physical. Now, the physical is basically just like a glorified sports physical. Um, you'll go up to Syracuse again for the physical, meet one of our docs, uh, excuse me, doctors. And uh, it's an it's a all morning process. You know, we'll be processing that day anywhere between five people to 25 people. So it's one of those where you'll be in a line waiting, uh, seeing the doc and going through this, you know, either a ear examination or testing your vision, so on and so forth. So it's basically like a very glorified sports physical. Um, now once you're done with that, depending on how things work out based on our schedule, again, and your schedule, um, either one, we can uh, look at opportunities right there up in Syracuse for jobs that you qualify for and enlist you at that point, or um, we can bring you back to the office and look at jobs then. Now, there's, there's, when we go through this process that I just talked about as far as the, um, the, the tests, the physical, and then the job selection, there's a couple ways we can do it. Again, we try to base things off your uh, convenience and our convenience. Um, so once we get to the job selection process, what we do is we punch in your, your scores on the test. Um, and if there's any physical um, limitations, for example, if an individual is colorblind, there's certain jobs that they can't do. Um, we'll have a series of jobs pop up on the system at our office uh, or at MEPS, depends on how things uh, are going down for that individual and the, and the processing for that specific individual. A, a series of jobs will pop up and it can be anywhere between five jobs to 25 jobs. A lot of it comes down to your scoring uh, on the test and we'll go over any options you may have, whether it's a bonus or an airborne option, uh, maybe a, a you know, a ranger contract, uh, and, and rangers have all kinds of jobs too. They do transportation, logistics, engineering, uh, administration jobs. Um, so just don't think you hear that word ranger and, and uh, it's strictly combat, uh, military occupational specialties are jobs. Um, so once we lock that job in, uh, we can reserve that job that you select for seven days. Now within that seven days, we have to get you back up to Syracuse to so go meet one of our guidance counselors. We got some great people up there um, and they'll 
bring you up, go over your contract that you just witnessed at our, our uh, office, whether a day or six days ago. Um, it'll say the same thing. Okay, this is the job that I, I, I selected. This is uh, maybe any options that I qualified for that I selected. Uh, you'll know when you would go to basic training, when you would go to your advanced individual training, which is your job skill training, um, and when you would leave uh, to go to your basic training. And it would look exactly the same up there at the guidance counselor's office, and you'll, you'll sign it, and then you'll go uh, back in another waiting room and wait for about five or six other applicants uh, from various other branches or Army or Army Reserves uh, as well to come out and then you will go through the enlistment or excuse me uh, not the enlistment process the ceremony of, of oath of enlistment and you'll bring you all in there and into the room where we have a whole bunch of the flags state flags the, the Army flags Marine Corps flags United States Army or excuse me United States flag and an officer will come in there and they'll administer the, the oath of enlistment. And that's that part where you raise that right hand and you know, they say, I state your name and boom, I do solemnly swear to support and defend and so on and so forth. Um, so help me God or firm, um, depending on, on your take and your religious beliefs. Um, after that is done, then we bring you back to our office and we'll try to set up a, a date uh, with a, a couple days after that to do your future soldier orientation because you know, when you come in and, and you enlist the United States Army up at Syracuse MEPS that we just talked about, now you're a future soldier. Okay, we have a set date, you're en enlisted, and you have a ship date when you go. Now you start transitioning over uh, from myself, who would be your recruiter, into our future soldier leader. And that gentleman's name is Staff Sergeant Brian Jordan. Great guy. Um, he, uh, he's been with us for about six, seven months now. Um, oh, excuse me, about, about five months now. Great guy, and uh, he's, he's really taken a hold of this Future Soldier uh, program. Now, when you're a Future Soldier and you come down for the orientation, uh, Sergeant Jordan will go over some of the, the, the do's and don'ts, if you will. Okay, you know, obviously, you gotta stay out of trouble, so on and so forth, stuff like that. Um, you know, that also it's, it's stated in there that we have to maintain a professional relationship, you know. Um, we go over various examples that, that could compromise that professional relationship that, again, these are the do's and don'ts. Uh, also, in that orientation, you will receive an equal opportunity briefing uh, about our policies on equal opportunity. You also receive a briefing on SHARP, Sexual Harassment Assault Reporting Program. We're very, very, very big on both those programs. Uh, matter of fact, I'm the EO leader for our office and I'm also uh, SHARP certified. I'm very big on those two things. Um, after that, Sergeant Jordan will schedule uh, for you to do the OPAT, which is the Occupational Physical Assessment Test, to verify that you meet the physical requirements uh, to perform your duties in that job that you've selected. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll give you some paperwork for your direct deposit form, because I imagine everybody wants to get paid when they do, do a job, do a little bit of work. Um, after that, uh, every Wednesday, uh, we meet uh, and in our office or maybe somewhere in the local area where, we'll, where we will conduct future soldier training. Uh, that future soldier training could be some physical training that day. Um, it could be some uh, classes on you know, various things in the Army, land navigation, drone ceremony, customs and courtesies, rank structure, military times, um, all kinds of stuff. And the future soldier training program is, is very important. When I came in the Army, we didn't have that program. And uh, they started up um, several years ago. I think it was, I want to say it was in 2008, nine time frame that the future soldier training program started up. And it's, and it's really good because it helps you transition from the civilian uh, world, what we call, into the to, to the army world. And uh, it's it's it's. I wish I had it. It was great. Um, and you work with the recruiters, you know, and we're always available for questions uh, that you may have. I mean, anything. I mean, that's what we're here for: is pass that information on, that knowledge about anything that you may have any questions about. Now, the future soldier training program. Um, it's not just that. There will be a day where we will sit down and go over any questions. We'll actually like pre-plan questions that, that most future soldiers will have because sometimes um, when you have that crowd, um, nobody wants to be the, the first one to ask a question. So that, that's fine, we accommodate that, we understand that. Um, but there's, there's all kinds of questions. You know, some of us actually will we'll go put our place in, in their shoes. Okay, I know when I shipped out to basic training, this is what was on my mind. And it generates that, that good conversation going. Because again, you know, I, I can't say this enough, that we're all about passing on this information uh, to, to benefit you, you know, this is our, my, my backyard. Again, I was born and raised in uh, Elmira and grew up in my early teens up in Horseheads. Um, and then you're in the Future Soldier Training Program up until the, the moment where you go off to basic training. Now, 30 days before that date, uh, you'll, meet, uh, you'll sit down with a scheduled appointment with Staff Sergeant Jordan and he'll go over your orientation. Again, if it's called your, um, your ship orientation. 
okay, and or your ship briefing. And he'll go over, okay, just make sure you have your direct deposit form um, filled out, everything's good as far as all your administration documents, that, you know, mom and dad or girlfriend, whoever, um, understand how they can, uh, how you will get a hold of them and answer any questions that you may have that have arisen since, you know, last time we spoke with you. Um, and, and then 24 hours, we'll give you a call back, or 24 hours, excuse me, before your ship date, uh, you know, we'll call you again. Hey, you know, I'll just give you a reminder, come down to our office about 10.30 tomorrow, whatever the case, uh, the time may be that we take you back up to Syracuse. And uh, that's kind of about it in regards to how you will our transition from us to shipping out to basic training. Um, you know, we'll buzz you up to Syracuse, you'll stay at the hotel again, and uh, from there on out, you will ship out to basic training. Please stay tuned, our, after our next break, we're actually gonna meet uh, one of our future soldiers, Private Peacock. Uh, he's a great young man, he's really motivated. Uh, he's actually going to line of work where similar the, to, to myself, uh, again, my occupational specialty, my military occupational specialty, excuse me, uh, in the Army currently is a, a counterintelligence agent. So he's actually going to the intel field, more of an um, analyst, uh, which is an excellent job, fantastic job. Um, so please, yeah, stay tuned. Welcome back. Again, I'm Sergeant First Class Mike Warwick, and our special guest is Private Jacob Peacock out of Hammondsport. He's going to be a, a graduate here in July of Class of 2017. Um, I'll let Private Peacock introduce himself and talk a little bit more about himself. Hi, my name is Jake Peacock. I enlisted in the Army in the first week of August last year. So I've been participating in the Future Soldier program and everything, counting down the days till I can leave for basic, and I'm gonna be going to Fort Sill for my basic training, and then after that I go to my advanced individual training at Fort Huachuca for my intelligence analyst training. Now, Private Peacock, um, what, what, what drew you to like that encounter where you met your recruiter? Did your recruiter call you or did you meet him somewhere at school or something? Tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, I actually met um, Sergeant Cansdale at a college fair in Bath and he kind of appealed to me just like the military life and everything. I was originally thinking Marines, but he kind of drew me into the Army life. Nice, very nice. Now, um, so when you met Sergeant Cansdale, up there uh, in Bath, um, gave you a little bit of information and kind of sparked some interest. Right. Um, you guys set up a, a date to come down to the office? Uh, actually, I, he came to my school again to meet with me, so I didn't even have to go to the uh, mall to meet up with him. He just made it a lot easier on me. Very nice, and that's a very important thing right there is, you know, we, we try to make everything convenient uh, for our applicants. Obviously, we do have a schedule we have to adhere to, uh, but absolutely, we can come down to your school um, or to your house, meet mom and dad, whatever the case may be. So you had that appointment, and um, obviously, uh, Sarah Kanzel, you know, told you a lot of information, and you liked it, and you went through the test. You yep. scored very well. Right. And uh, then we scheduled Private Peacock's physical up at MEPS, so again, which is um, a little bit more uh, than a sports physical. Now, when I say that, you know, you're gonna make sure everything works, and blood pressure, eyes, ears, stuff like that, uh, draw some blood, um, things of that nature. And now when you came down to that job selection, okay, did you know what you wanted to get into when you selected your job or was it you looked at the list and like, tell me more about that? Uh, I definitely knew probably from like, I was like ninth grade and I always like was pretty appealed to like the intelligence side of things and everything. I would watch TV shows and I would be like, that's awesome. So I figured I wanted to find a career in, in that. So I tested and I qualified for it. So I was pretty happy I got to choose the job that I wanted to do. Very nice, very nice. Now, um, that goal, right, that goal down there on five, ten year goal, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is you want to work uh, in like a three letter agency. Right. And the, the, the job that he selected is going to make him highly marketable. Uh, you know, obviously he's going to pursue some college too. That's, that's on the goal uh, checklist. Um, but when he gets out, now you did a five year career? Uh, three. Three, three year three career. Um, and, you know, he's going to have a lot of skills, college, um, is going to be an asset to, to the team that he goes to for that three-letter agency. Um, now, is, he knows when, when he gets down or close to that graduation of the AIT, um, he's going to be able to know where he's going to be going on for his following assignment. There's all kinds of places for intel analysts to go. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit more. So since you uh, enlisted that day, you've been coming down every Wednesday um, to the Future Soldier Training Program. Right. Um, tell me a little bit more about how was your take on that? Uh, the first time I came, I don't even think I was enlisted yet. I just came to see what it was like and everything. And all the recruiters were really welcoming. There was people in the Army that I knew, so it was more fun. We got to have fun working out and everything. 
and it was just kind of like a little shot of what I might be experiencing in the Army in my future. Nice, nice. Now, you know, we do all kinds of stuff during the Future Soldier Training Program. We don't just, you know, go out there and, and do physical training. Um, Private Peacock got a little familiar with land navigation, some drill and ceremony, military times, rank structure, stuff like that. So that way, when he goes off to basic training, he's got a, a little leg up, if you will, uh, on, on the uh, system of basic training, how it will go, and, uh, you know, he's bringing some knowledge to the table, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, Private Peacock, if you have any advice out there for anybody uh, who's watching this show, if they, you know, either they do have interest or they, you know, maybe thinking about coming to our office, what would your words of, of encouragement or, or advice uh, be for them? Well, if you know, like, one of your friends or something that's in the Army, just have them contact their recruiter, get a hold of them, and the recruiters will probably just come right to your house because it's easy. Or they'll come to your school just to meet up with you, and the recruiters just make it easy on you, so you don't even have to worry about nervousness or anything like that going up to the station, you know. I, I originally thought that too, but Kansas Day would just meet with me at, right at the school, so it was, it was pretty simple. Nice, nice. All right, we're about to wrap it up here uh, for this episode of A Soldier's Life. I um, appreciate your, you watching. Uh, Private Peacock, I appreciate you coming down, my man. Thank you. You know, best of luck. Uh, please come back, um, you know, when you come back from your AIT on your leave, um, which is vacation. Um, uh, I would like to do a follow-up uh, if you got the time. Sounds good. You know what I mean? So it'd be awesome. Um, so our next episode uh, we are going to try and do is uh, once Private Peacock goes, he's going to meet one of his best friends of his entire life, and that's going to be his drill sergeant. And that's our next segment we're trying to get into is, is questions about basic training, breaking down some of the segments of basic training. And uh, we're trying, uh, we're about 99% sure we're going to be able to get a drill sergeant down here. As a matter of fact, it's the drill sergeant of the year of 2007, or excuse me, 16. Um, so a lot of information. Please write uh, to, the, to the news station or, you know, find us on Facebook or call the number, area code 607-796-5323. Uh, find us on Facebook, uh, Horse Ed's Army Recruiting Station, uh, or just, you know, walk down into the mall and come on through the door. If you see us out and about, please say hi. You know, we're very friendly people, and we're all about giving out that information and knowledge about what the opportunities in the Army uh, and the options and, and the, everything, you know, benefits, so on and so forth, uh, to see if you can use it to uh, achieve your goal. Again, I'm Sergeant First Class Mike Ward. Uh, strength in the nation, one commitment at a time.